I'm gonna shoot it to you straight, plant friend. I don't believe in a basic starter plan. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. You heard me right. I know that every online blog says the five best starter plants and the five best no light plants and all that kind of stuff, but I, the more that I'm in this space, the more of you that I get to know, I have really realized that there's no great basic starter plan, a blanket starter plan for all people. There are right starter plans for different personalities. The plants that are gonna thrive in my home with my lifestyle are gonna be so different than the plants that are gonna thrive in your home and your lifestyle because we're all different human beings, right? So that's what today's episode is gonna be about, pairing the right plant for your lifestyle, not just the right plant in general. Okay, now that I've gotten off my soapbox, <laughs> my plant parent soapbox, I wanna tell you about this really cool tool that I created after seeing this kind of pattern repeat over and over again. So I'm obsessed with personality tests. I'm an Enneagram three wing four. Um, I haven't taken the Myers-Briggs yet, but like I'm so such a believer in personality tests. I think they're amazing tools to help you get to know yourself better. And isn't that why we're all on this earth? In getting to know our community, uh, thousands of people across all the countries in the world, um, over the last four years, it's been very interesting because I've noticed that there are some really interesting personality types within our community. Um, I see them reflected in myself. I see them in all of you. And so a quarantine baby of mine in 2020 was launching the Bloom and Grow Plant Parent Personality Test. I've talked about plant parent personalities on my podcast for a long time, but I was finally able to distill it into this really fun free three minute quiz that you take. And at the end of it, you get your personality test, which profiles your strengths and your weaknesses for each personality. And then it gives a, a suggested list of recommended plants tailored to your personality and your lifestyle. Um, DIY planty projects that I think could be fun for your lifestyle and also recommended Bloom and Grow Radio podcasts because at this point we're at 118 podcasts and newer people to the podcast might get intimidated and not know where to start. So I thought that it would be fun in this video to go through some of the personalities in the test and share some of their strengths and weaknesses and some suggested plants. And I highly encourage you to actually click the link below and take the test for yourself and see all of the other plants that are suggested. I'm just gonna go over one species per plant parent in this video, but I recommend like six or seven species for each personality. And I hope you learn something about yourself and I hope that it's a really helpful tool for you. Before we dive into the different personality breakdowns, one other thing I want to say, like your horoscope sometimes, I find, or like an Enneagram where you kind of have a wing, I find that there are versions and percentages of the personalities within each person. So also with some listeners, now we've had like a few thousand people take the test. Some listeners have written in saying, hey, I actually took the test a couple of times and this is what resonates me about mindful. This is what, you know, resonates with me about design. So feel free to like click around when you're on there and kind of read all the personality types because it's kind of fun to be nosy too. And you can see like who your friends are and that kind of stuff. But anyway, let's start with the mindful plant parent. So so here are some plants that I think are great for the mindful plant parent. The mindful plant parent is someone who really wants to engage with their plants on a daily basis. They use plants as part of their restorative experience. They want to use them as part of their mindful practice. They want to get in there with their plants every day and experience that joy and wellness that comes from caring for plants too. Um, a lot of mindful plant parents in our community. We've got a lot of them. So an interesting thing about mindful plant parents, and I know this because I am 80% of the time a mindful plant parent. Um, mindful plant parents can be prone to overwatering their plants because we wanna just like love up on our plants so much. So you gotta be careful about that. But at the same time, it's really smart to choose plants that like to be watered more frequently than others. So a mindful plant parent might really struggle with snake plants, you know, or ZZ plants or cacti because those things don't wanna be watered that often. But a mindful plant parent would love a fern, right? Because ferns love moisture, they love humidity. You can kind of care to your plan and get your humidifier going and your your you know humidity dome and you can be like watering more frequently and you can be wiping leaves and you can be like doing all these things with your plants that are a little bit more high maintenance. Of course, you're gonna need the humidity. You're gonna need those things that you know ferns need, but also there are hardier ferns like this bird's nest fern. I freaking love this blue star fern that I've only had one other time and it has been rather hardy for me comparatively to like a maidenhair fern. Another 
genus that I think is awesome is the prayer plants, Marantaceae, um, Sinanthi, um, and Calathea, you know, those are also moisture loving plants. Do your humidity hacks with them, but they need a little bit more of a regular check-in. So for a mindful plant parent, I would recommend these too. Definitely go take the test because I've got a whole lot of suggestions and other plants that mindful plant parents might like. Okay, next up is the low key plant parent. And ironically, I vacillate between mindful plant parent, which is like helicopter plant parent and low key plant parent. They are polar opposites, but depending on what season of life that I'm in, I really oscillate between these two. Um, so the low key plant parent is basically the opposite of the mindful plant parent. They might like to have the benefits of plants in their space, but uh, they don't have time. <laughs> Maybe they're you know, a stay-at-home parent with a bunch of little kids running around. Maybe they're a consultant who travels. They might love to travel a lot and they need to be able to leave their plants and not check in with their plants for a few weeks at a time. Um, this type of plant parent is a little prone to underwatering, which I have been known to do in seasons of life. Um, but also, speaking of low-key plant parent, I need to wipe these leaves down. There's some dust on this plant, but you can still enjoy plants and not wanna like be up in their business every day and you can be a low key plant parent and have a beautiful collection of plants. My favorite suggestion, I mean, if I was to recommend a general plant to anyone, it would be the snake plant, not even because I think it's a starter plant, I'm just, it's my favorite plant. Um, snake plants are great for low key plant parents because they are drought tolerant. So if you leave for a few weeks, your snake plants will likely be intact when you get home. Um, also, I think it's so cool that they come in so many different sizes. So this little guy is a snake, uh, a Sansevieria samurai. Um, and he's like a teeny tiny little guy that grows like pretty much, this is like where he's gonna max out in height. Um, you have Sansevieria moonshine, which is gorgeous. It's actually reverting back to something else because I haven't had it in enough light. Um, and then also my tried and true ride or die Sansevieria zelanica. It's been happier. <laughs> it's not not thrilled with me right now. Some of my plants are struggling after our move. Um, but if you're a low-key plant parent, you're not going to go wrong with the snake plant. And also, there's so, there's such a variety. You could just have like a whole freaking home filled with snake plants. And I know a lot of people who do. All right, next up, we actually ironically kind of go to the land of all my teeny tiny plants. A lot of these plants, I don't know why, but um, I've gotten a lot of these plants as cuttings from friends, which is why they're in such tiny pots as I kind of grow them to fill up larger pots. You can check out my technique for doing that in the previous YouTube video. So personality number three, a super interesting personality who I know many people are and will relate to is the curious collector. So the curious collector is someone who dives deep. You often see this person going from zero to 60 or zero to 100 really quickly, 100 really quickly. Um, I think we had a lot of curious collectors in the pandemic pop up. Um, a lot of people in 2020 that amassed large plant collections in a very short amount of time. Um, and the cool thing about curious collectors is they're curious. And I feel like that's why a lot of us care for plants, right? Um, they want to not only just like have plants to make them look pretty, but they want to like go deep in a genus. They want to have every type of Sansevieria. They want to have every type of Peperomia or every type of Hoya. And that's why I have these two types of plants out here because I think they are such amazing genii to dive deep with. So Peperomia I've loved since I started. I have a watermelon Peperomia that's not doing great. I'm too embarrassed to show you it right now as I rehab it a little bit. Um, but I also have this Peperomia obtusifolia, a Peperomia ho, Peperomia prostrata, one of my absolute favorites. This is a Peperomia rubicola. Um, there's like thousands of different types of Peperomia that you could have. You could have a huge collection of just Peperomia and have the most like varied collection ever. The thing that's cool about Peperomia too is they have really different leaf shapes. They actually, their leaves feel different. Like all of these different Peperomias have different leaf structures, different leaf shapes, different leaf sh textures. So all together they look really cool. And they tend to be a super hardy plant. They tend to be a genus that is really easy to take care of. So if you have a lot of them, um, it's easy to not you know, kill them all <laughs> at once. We've got a fun Peperomia um, propagation video on YouTube and an awesome episode on Peperomia with Nick Pileggi, a fellow YouTuber, um, the podcast that you should check out if you wanna dive deep with these guys because there's so much. 
Another genus that I am getting so into, and it's really funny as I just put these out here, I didn't realize I have five Hoyas and two months ago I didn't have I, did, I had zero Hoyas two months ago. So, or maybe I had, no, I had two Hoyas two months ago and I've re I've gotten these three in the last two months. So Hoya are another one. Our podcast episode with Doug Chamberlain on Hoya is one of the most downloaded, most popular episodes of the show because I think a lot of people love Hoya for so many different reasons. If you look at this collection of plants, it's unbelievable that they're all related to each other. Their leaf shapes are all so wildly different and their flowers are so wildly different. They come in every color, they come in every scent. Um, you can just dive so deep on, on this type of plant. And if you take the personality test and you click the website, we have a couple of different genus that really have such amazing variety um, within them. And if you're a curious collector, the sky's the limit. Um, one word of the wise to curious collectors, I have found that of all the different plant parent personality types, curious collectors tend to be the ones that maybe get in jeopardy of overspending, of over collecting, you know, they've got to get the Pokemons, you know, like they've got to get all the Pokemons and so then all of a sudden, you know, they've got too many Pokemons and it's too hard to care for all of them. So um, I would say as you grow your collection, grow it slowly, grow it intentionally, grow it on a budget that you're comfortable with, don't overdo it. Um, and in the long run, you're going to be so much happier. An example is I really want to grow my Alocasia collection. I've been obsessed with them for a while and they're definitely the Pokemon that I always want. And the other day I was at the nursery and there was a silver dragon Alocasia and I wanted it so bad. If you saw on Instagram, I had like a freaking mental breakdown about it. And I ended up leaving it at the nursery because I knew at this moment in my plant parenthood life, I don't have the setup to make that thing happy. And I'd rather leave it at the nursery than bring it home because I just had to have it and then kill it accidentally or have it not be happy. So anyway, that's my disclaimer for curious collectors, but you're freaking awesome. And if you are a curious collector, please let me know in the comments and let me know what you like to dive deep on because man, I just think that's so fun. And I also think that's like up leveling your plant parenthood instead of just like getting whatever plant you want. Like I think it's really powerful to like go really deep on one specific thing. And it also could be going really deep on semi-hydro or really deep on soil substrates or really deep on humidity. Okay, the next plant parent is the design-based plant parent. This one I think is really interesting. They are interested in like the aesthetic vibe of their home with plants and they are into like structural statement pieces in their home. So this um, fan palm that I just picked up, I'm so excited about it, is a great example of a structural piece. You can't really see it, but this could just be like a structural piece that grows and grows and grows like in a sunny corner of a room. A fiddly fig is a big one that a lot of design-based plant parent like. Or, of course, our trusty Monstera. I mean, the Monstera is where it's at. The Monstera is the vision board for most design-based plant parents with its structural leaves. Raphidophora tetrasperma is another one. Um, the only thing for design-based plant parents, well, many things, but the only, the big thing for design-based plant parents to be careful of is I see sometimes they are so into the aesthetic and the Instagrammable look of wherever they're styling the plant that they don't actually take the plant's needs into consideration. So I would say if you are a design-based plant parent, good for you. I am not very good at designing and curating an aesthetic or an Instagram feed, but um, just be careful. Make sure you read your care cards. Make sure you do research. Make sure that you understand that, you know, if you want to bring home a fiddly fig, you need bright light <laughs> for the fiddly fig. It's not going to thrive in a dark corner. Um, so you can either pop a grow light in that dark corner like I do, or consider a lower light tolerant corner plant like a big snake plant or a big ZZ. I mean, snake plants can be also very structural. So anyway, that's design based. And last but not least is the urban farmer. And this person is someone who wants to grow their own food. They wanna reconnect with the earth and their food and the food chain and they wanna they want to reap what they sow and they, and they wanna harvest. Um, windowsill herb gardens are so awesome and also if you checked out my lettuce grow hydroponic planter review i mean that thing is epic i've been making my own smoothies from my living room from this planter that i've grown in my living room um so hydroponics is a really cool thing for um, urban farmers to grow you just have to make sure you have the right lighting requirements because herbs and food require lots and lots of light usually six to eight hours of light 
and you've got to facilitate that. So personally, if I grow indoors, I need a lighting setup, like a massive lighting setup. Um, I'm super excited. I will be seed starting over there sometime soon, and I will be doing it all on video for you guys, so stay tuned. Those are some of the Planned Parent personalities. I highly encourage you go take the test because there's a lot I left out. This is just a fun overview to get you started, to get you curious. It's totally normal if you feel like several of the personalities resonate with you. You could have a wing, as the Enneagram would say, or you could, you know, have a split personality. I mean, why the heck not? I'm part-time mindful plant parent, part-time low-key plant parent. But it's good for me to know that both of those personalities exist within me. So I know to when I am in a stressed out, you know, crazed place, I know that I've got to remind myself to check in with my plants. And when I'm in like my emotional nurturing, you know, phases of my life, I've got to like reel it in on the watering or I'm going to kill everyone. <laughs> So you can check out the personality test at bloomandgrowradio.com slash personality. It's linked down below. And please let me know your results in the comments and tag me on Instagram. It has been so fun seeing people's results. You might just get pinned in my stories if you share. Um, and I try and reshare as many of them as I can. And I just hope it's a tool that helps you do, keep do, blooming do, and keep growing. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do